saints and priests be given to our God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The thanks, praises, honor be given to our Father, Rida Olumba Olumba, to boot in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let thanks, praises, honor, dominion, and adoration ever be thine for now and evermore. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. Most merciful Father, most compassionate Father, and the most righteous Father. Father, here we are, thy sinful children. Father, we have come once again before the throne of mercy. Father, we have come knowing fully well that we've sinned against the Father. Father, we've done so many unseeming things. We lie, we cheat. Father, we don't even put your words into practice. We've sinned against the Father with our entire bodies. We've sinned against it through our thoughts, actions, and utterances. Father, we are not worthy to be called our children. But we thank you, dear Father, for indeed you are not like man. For you have said that even though our sins be read as crimson, and that whenever we come to thee with penitent hearts, confessing all our wrongdoings, Father, did he promise to take us back? Father, here we are. Still on abandoned knees, still begging and pleading, Father, for it was for this same reason that you sent your only begotten Son to come and die for the remission of all our sins. Father, we thank you so much, Father, for indeed His precious blood on the cross of Calvary has washed us clean, both in our bodies and our souls. Father, say the thanks and praises be given to thee in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear Father, what can we say? What can we do? Father, on our own we can do nothing. But with thee, Father, we can do greater works. And that's why we are calling on thee this morning, Father, to come and deliver us, to come and change us, to come and purify us. Thank you for sanctifying each and every one of us at the same time. And through this sanctification, Father, you have declared us to be thy bona fide children by faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, the times and praises be given to thee in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear Father, nobody ever comes to thee and goes back empty handed. Just as long as such a one is spiritually minded, as long as such a one has a forgiving heart. As long as such a one surrenders to thee a pure and undefiled heart, as long as such a one is not spiritually blind, not spiritually deaf, but as long as such a one is humble and patient and has faith and trust in thee, for in thee, Father, there is no disappointment. Therefore, all those who put their faith, their trust in thee, Father, you said they will never see shame. Neither will they be disappointed. Because in thee, Father, there is no disappointment. Father, so let thanks and praises be given to thee in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear Father, your children have come this morning seeking thy face. Thank you, Father, for the resurrection. Father, thank you, Father, for making sure that we also have resurrected with you. You love us so much, you care for us so much, Father. You don't just want us to perish. That's why daily keep teaching us to have love one for another. Thank you for always admonishing us to always do good so that only good things will follow us wherever we go. Father, say the thanks and praises be given to thee in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear Father, for your loving kindness. Thank you for all the patience. Thank you also for showing mercy 
through showing mercy, you've given each and every one of us a second chance. A second chance will be good children unto thee. A second chance will always put thee first in everything that we do. A second chance to do thy work the way it is supposed to be done. A second chance to always speak the truth and practice righteousness so that it do be well with us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for also assuring us that if we look for thee, Father, we must look for you in spirit and in truth. Thank you for making us all obedient children. Thank you, Father, for putting thy spirit into us, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us, and also lead us at right to the accurate knowledge of the truth, so that in the end, glory and honor will continue to be thine for now and evermore. Amen. Let thanks praises be given to thee in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let thanks praises be given to the one and only mighty, mighty God in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, let all thanks, all praises, all honor, all wisdom, all power, all authority and supremacy be given to thee and thee alone for now and evermore. Galatians chapter 4 verses 2 to 6. Our first Bible lesson it's drawn from the epistle of Paul the Apostle to Galatians chapter 4 from verse 2 to 6. But it's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because he has sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. May the Lord bless his holy words. Amen. Galatians chapter 3 verses 26 to 28. Our second Bible lesson is an extract from the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Galatians chapter 3 reading from verse 26 through 28. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. May the Lord bless his holy words. Amen. Our good in text is taken from 2 Corinthians. Chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. A golden test is taken from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 3, from verse 13 to 18. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished, but their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed unto the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. May the Lord bless his holy words. Amen. Abba, Father. Oh, have mercy on me. Abba, Father. We have come as the ungodly. 
We are not worthy to call upon thy name. For the day I have Father, have mercy on me. Say, say, I have Father, have mercy on me. I have Father, have mercy on me. No more division, 
no more division, no more division, no more division, no more division among the children of God. We are one. No more division among the Christians. No more division among the Muslims. No more division among the children of God. We are one. Praise the Lord. We are one. Praise the Lord. We are one. Praise the Father. We are one. One in the Lord. We are one in all of God. We are one flesh and blood. We don't know which name from.
Ya Bicha Suri Holy Spirit. Dear brethren, as you can see, and as you have heard, the two spiritual choruses constitute our gospel this afternoon. So without wasting time or delaying you unduly, let us hear once again our first Bible reading. Our first Bible lesson. It's drawn from the Epistle of Paul the Apostle to Galatians chapter 4 from verse 2 to 6. But it's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so we, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. May the Lord bless his holy words. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 There are pictures of the Holy Spirit. I'm sure you will notice one important thing there. Time. When it is time, that thing meant to happen will happen. When it is not yet time, try all you can. Do all you can. It will never happen. And that time we're talking about is now. Because according to what you've heard, he said he has sent the spirit of the son to us. Eh? He has sent the spirit of the son to us. When well, once you have the spirit of the son, you are in. You are in, oh. And because you have the spirit of the son, he must be like the son. He must behave like the son. He must talk like the son. He don't talk anyhow, anyhow. He don't go around knocking people's head. He don't go around beating up people. He don't go around accusing people anyhow. He don't go around looking for the downfall of people. Unless you don't have the spirit of the son in you. But when one the spirit of the son is in you, dear brother, your behavior will change completely. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all those who have the spirit of the son, they experience oneness. I said they experience oneness. How many have the spirit of the son here? I said, how many have the spirit of the son here? We just sang, we are one. One in the Lord. How can you be one? If you don't have his spirit in you. You've heard this way to a chorus. Say, no more division among the children of God. Eh? Whether you're white or black or yellow, or green or... Whatever is your inclination... Wherever you come from, as long as you have the Spirit of God in you, we are one. I say we are one, oh, when one the Spirit of God is in you, your behavior changes. So as you can see, if you claim to have the Spirit of God, oh, our Lord Jesus Christ in you, and you still quarrel, and fight, and play evil, and do evil. His spirit is not in you. I say his spirit is not in you. Because those who have the spirit of uh, Lord Jesus Christ in them, they behave like him. They walk like him. They do things like him. I know some doubting Thomas are saying, how can that be? 
How can you have the spirit and be like him, walk like him, talk like him? Yeah, brethren, when one the spirit enters you, you must be an obedient child. You must put his word into practice. And as such, your behavior will change you. If you used to get angry easily, you will not get angry again. Because you now put on the spirit of the child. That was why I asked how many have put on the spirit of the child in them. Because it's not to say, I have the spirit of the child, and you are still a thief. You are still a liar. You don't like to work with people. When once you have that spirit, you are one with all those who have the same spirit. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now the big question is, how do you get this spirit? Do you go to spa and uh, buy it? Or go to essential shop and buy it? Eh? How do you get it? Eh? Dear brethren. Dear brethren. Oh. Uh-huh. When once you have this spirit, that is why when people say, I join brotherhood, I laugh at them. You don't join brotherhood. You only join secret society. You join court. The brotherhood of the cross and star, you are born into it. Because as soon as you confess your sin, I don't mean confessing some and leaving some. When you confess all your sins, that means you are ready for him. And after the baptism, the spirit enters you. It is as simple as that. Nobody has to conjure anything into you. Because some people will tell you want to conjure to bring the spirit into you. Uh -uh. As soon as you confess your, all your sins, all your sins that you have ever committed, and you release them, you say you don't want to be part of it again. You don't want it to come across you again. And then they baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Son takes over you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't mean those on their way to baptism. They see snail they buy. They see stuff, they say, bro, bro, let me, I've not seen this type for some time now, let me get it now. Uh-uh. You have no business with any mundane thing. You have no business with food. This is the time you surrender to him. After all your confession, and you take your immersion, it will enter you. Remember our Lord Jesus Christ now, was it not after his baptism? What happened? Dove landed on him. And that was the spirit of God that entered him. So something must happen to you. Otherwise, you are not in you know, those who used to boast. I'm a baptized brotherhood. I've been baptized for 20 years. I've been baptized for 30 years. In this kingdom, and with God, the time you baptize doesn't matter. And there's nothing like first come, first serve. Eh? When once you baptize, you are a new being in Him. And it will be all over you. After your baptism, you find yourself still doing those things that you used to do before. That means he did not enter you. Now tell me, where does quarreling, fighting come from? Huh? Where do they come from? Hatred, where do they come from? Our Lord Jesus Christ, because the spirit of his father entered him after his baptism. Did you see him fight? Did you see him quarrel? Did you see him abuse anybody? 
He became one with his father. And when once you baptize, you also be one with him. From that moment, the Holy Spirit will be directing you. Remember, I said he had to go. He said he had to go and prepare a place for you so that when you come, you'll be with him. You'll sit together with him. You'll eat with him. You'll do everything with him. How do you think that was going to be possible? Now he has come, not sending anybody. Are you one with him? Are you with him? So he must be one with him, or otherwise you are wasting your time. Eh. It's not a question you say, I am with him. In the morning, you are one thing. Afternoon, you are a different thing. In the night, oh. When once he enters you, that love you don't have, you will have love. For. That peace you are looking for, you will have peace. Amen. That humility you tell people, whether I am an idiot to be humble, humility will come. All the heavenly virtues will enter you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the whole thing will happen naturally. When one's spirit enters you, you become one with him. And all those with the same spirit will be one. You'll be one with them. And all of you will be one with him. That's why that song says, no more division amongst the white, among the black. Even animals. That's why you are told here, don't eat animals. I know a lot of you still eat chicken, eat uh, goat, eat all kinds of things. You know what happened now? Those who eat dog, when dog sees them, they run away. <laughs> if you only dog sight, you say, that's a dog eater there. Let me run oh, before he will eat me. Oh. So you must be one with everybody. When once you come in here declaring that you've taken your baptism, it will repackage your behavior. I say, if you behave the way you used to behave before, that means he has not entered you. There's something wrong with your baptism. Is there anybody that has been baptized and still behave the way you used to behave before? I know you will not talk. Because that is the problem. You are seeing quarrels some. Does God quarrel? Huh? So if you want to be one with him, when the spirit enters you, that quarreling spirit must leave you. Amen. That angry spirit will also leave you. Amen. That wicked, evil spirit will also leave you. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even as you are seated here, you find yourself gossiping. You gossip somebody. Right now, you are looking at somebody and reporting that person. Is the spirit of God in you? Is that the spirit of oneness? Ah. So when you are in that habit, you know you don't have the spirit of God in you. So you see, God has kept to his promise. Our Lord Jesus Christ said he has to go, prepare a place, so that wherever he will be, you will be there. If you have his spirit, you are with him. That is why those with his spirit, wherever they go, he goes before them. He's also behind them. He's all over you. And as such, no evil can come close to you. Eh. Evil will come close to you when you don't have that spirit, when you are not one with him. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brethren, we're not going to be tedious unto you. Let us hear our second Bible reading once again. Our second Bible lesson is an extract 
from the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Galatians, chapter 3, reading from verse 26 through 28. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. May the Lord bless his holy words. Amen. Christ
you can see why a lot of people are afraid of brotherhood children. Because when you put him on, the Holy Spirit will protect you. Eh? And if your landlord is in the habit of turning into something to collect money from his tenants, that landlord will not be able to take your money. That is why most landlords, immediately they know that you are a brotherhood. They say, don't come home. This place, we don't give it to brotherhood. Eh? Because he knows, with the spirit of God in you, he won't be able to take your money. Because they turn to something to come and pick your money. Why do they always do that? They do it to people that they can crawl upon. You know? The brotherhood children, they are afraid of them. Because when once you have the spirit on, you I think cannot get missing anyhow. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When once you put him on, I think he used to tell you, oh, it's your planet. What is planet? Doesn't God own the planet? So why is the planet disturbing you when you have put him on? Huh? They'll tell you all kinds of things to confuse you, to make you afraid. As you know, brother who does not have anything, does not believe in witchcraft, does not believe in mermaid, does not believe in idol. We do not worship those things. The only person we worship is God himself, in spirit and in truth. And those things can never have any power over you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, you all are celebrating Easter. The resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because he resurrected. That makes all those who believe in him. All those who put him on. They are all children of resurrection. They have nothing to do with evil. But if you think you have him, you believe in him. And then you still do idolism. <laughs> Those two things cannot work. <laughs> you better choose one. I say you better choose one. Because you cannot worship God in the morning. And at night you go and worship idol. It doesn't work that way. You must choose one. Must use the most powerful one, the most reliable one, because God is the reliable one. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. See now, our Lord Jesus Christ came and worked for us. At the end of the day, he declared that he has finished his work. All what he came to do for us, he has done them. He has sacrificed himself. He has resurrected. So where are you? Where do you stand? Are you with him? Are you with him? Are you one with him? Because if you are one with him, then you have nothing to be afraid of. Because he will be there for you. He will be in front and behind you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. See now, our Lord Jesus Christ came to work for his father. He did not ask for anything. Even where to put his head, he did not have. But today, workers of God, they will look for luxurious accommodation. They will look for all kinds of beautiful things. Would those things make you derail? Wouldn't those beautiful things make you to derail? So you see, he came, no house, no place to put his head. But he did not mind. He did, his, he did his work. He did not say, what will I eat? What will I drink? What will I wear? Eh? Some people, when you post them to a place, when they scan their eyes, eh, and see the people in that bed, they say, ah, these people, can they take care of me? Is that why you went there? Huh? 
Is that why you went there to be taken care of? What about the father you believe in? Because he says he will take care of you. If you believe in him, if you have him, if you put him on, he can never allow you to suffer. Today you suffer because you don't have him. You don't believe in him. You are not even working for him. Some are working for the stomach. And because of that, they use other things to confuse people. And people will think, ah, so brother, who they do this kind of thing? You will suffer. I say you will suffer. Anybody you deceive, anybody you play magic on, all in the name of brotherhood, all in the name, oh, you are a priest in brotherhood. Today, some preachers, they don't even allow the administrators to bring tight payments here. They connive and take the money. Is that what you went for? You think I don't know? Very soon, you get it. You get what is coming to you for playing with him. Because most of you, you are playing with him instead of working for him. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, brethren. May we hear our golden text once again. Thank you, Father. A golden text is taken from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 3, from verse 13 to 18. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed unto the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. May the Lord bless his holy words. Hallelujah. 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 Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Now, will you blame the Christendom? Will you blame them? Eh? Will you blame those churches that don't like brotherhood? Because the veil is still covering them. Now you can see why Israel is still in darkness. Eh? They still believe in Moses. They still put the law of Moses into practice. But Christ has come. And when that one came, did they recognize him? Did they know him? Did they believe in him? Instead of that, they kill him. Say, so let us kill him so that we can rest and continue to make money from these stupid people. Aha. But today, when you put on Christ, the veil is being taken out from your face. You can see clearly. You can show love. You can have peace. When you put on Christ, see all the advantages you have. You see clearly. And you will live long ago. Ill health will not be your problem. Because you have put on Christ. Put on Christ. And see whether your life will ever be the same again. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come see what in we the sea. Come get what in we the air. Come get what we the air. You know go fi get on anywhere. No one go fi give me thing you no get. No one go fi talk with thing you no know at all. Come 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 see. Papa 
for the wise. So therefore, he who has ears, let him or her hear. What the Holy Spirit has given to us. I say, may he alone. May he alone. May he alone. Bless his holy word. 